working, I don't know, like 15 years on a traditional waterfall model, I started to notice a, a lot of, uh, you know, minor glitches, if you will. It, it, it's not that waterfall doesn't work, it's that it's not always the best thing. So, for example, if you have this process when you have analysis, architecture, uh, I don't know, database scripting and all that stuff, before you actually go into the actual development, whenever you want to change directions or anything needs to change at that point, it needs to go, to go back to the beginning and through all the process and, you know, you have this uh, uh, block, I guess, blocker uh, through your development. Uh, another thing is that, you know, even though you can do previews of what you're developing, because there's not this commitment to develop like small uh, slices of the actual product, you're showing part of the product, but the, at the end, really the client will see the product after six months or a year after you finish the actual development. By then, either features are obsolete, uh, actual features that the client did, you know, even though he requested those uh, features, might not make sense anymore or he doesn't like it because now that he sees that, he understands that that's not what he wanted, or the developers took, or you know, development team, whoever, the anal anal analyst, QA, or whatever, but they took uh, certain liberties or, 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 or directions that stray away from, from the actual uh, goal. So anyways, by the end of the, pro uh, of the day, you will have this product, which is not necessarily what you wanted, right? So you have unhappy clients. So after seeing that type of things, I started reading a, a, a lot of Agile, in particular Scrum, and uh, after having the chance in this company to work here uh, and noticing that they really appreciate uh, uh, the, the advantage of, of having Agile and Scrum here, uh, I took the opportunity immediately and I loved it. I mean, you have fully committed teams, uh, independent teams, uh, capable teams, and, uh, and so quick uh, uh, turnaround for even fixes or, or new previews or features or whatever. I mean, you can do that really quickly. So I really think uh, it's a, a more modern approach, more flexible, and it, it really gives you a lot of uh, value, I guess, uh, as a whole team and as a, you could say as a client, right? Okay, so I think the, the uh, more difficult part is getting the team to understand their role there. I mean, actually buying into Agile. Uh, a development team that is, uh, normally works with set of instructions. I mean, I tell the developer to do this, this, and this, and that's all it is. If you have that mentality, you will have uh, difficulty adapting to Agile. Because Agile, again, we empower you. You tell me how to do stuff. You tell, I'll tell you what I want, but you tell me how it's gonna be done. And if you don't know, then you figure it out. But it's not this, you know, you won't have this other authority or role saying exactly how to do stuff. So as a team, uh, as a team member and as a team, you need to figure things out. Uh, and really, uh, a developer or a QA or designer that is not uh, used to work this way, it, it tends to be something difficult to really understand, right? To understand that all that responsibility, it's theirs and only theirs. The other aspect of this is there's also this product owner role, which is the person is going to give you the value, right? It's going to de determine the value of whatever you're working on. So he needs to set priorities, uh, let the team know what exactly he wants to develop, but he also needs to give space to the team. He, he uh, doesn't need to be intruding into, into the day-to-day -day development. He needs to give space. So both aspects of understanding this roles and understanding the, 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 um, the things they need to do. It's, I think it's something that, you know, little by little, you get to know it and after a while it's, you know, so natural, but at the beginning it's difficult to understand. Okay, I would say the biggest misconception uh, is that People think that it's not structure, that this, it's this type of uh, hippie development, right? That you can do whatever you want and whatever the, the times you want. That the only uh, real goal is to have working software, and it's not. I mean, it's a philosophy and it has a lot of points like giving value to the people and, and actually having uh, working software, but it's more than that. It's a framework, so it gives you basic rules, more of a philosophy. But really, for example, in our case, we have uh, instituted into our process 
things like uh, QA, obviously documentation, uh, uh, code re um, sorry, uh, code reviews, uh, test cases, uh, uh, unit testing, you know, peer programming. I mean, there's there's a lot of steps, checkboxes that we, we added to this framework, right? So the thing is, there's so many agilists out, outside that might say, you know, I don't care, it's, you know, just develop. But really, it's not. You, know, you adapt that to your current process, and while you might while maintaining the philosophy, that's okay, right? So, anytime you listen, even as a developer or as a client, that something is working in Agile, you might might get that idea, right? That everybody can do whatever they want, and that, for example, I even heard this uh, question one time on a panel. They asked me. Uh, is documentation forbidden? I'm like, no, you can include that. It's part of the process. I mean, it's, it's not. It, it, you can do it as structured as you want, but again, the main objective is uh, to understand that you're working as a team and, uh, and that you're responsible for a lot of things, right? But, but that's the point, right? So, so yeah, don't think about it as this uh, crazy, hippie kind of development uh, without rules, because actually you might be part of a process.